What happens to your body from a scientific point of view when you ingest magic mushrooms? Welcome to a new episode of our series, The Effects of Drugs. We think it's important to understand what happens from a scientific perspective because in our view, it can help make drugs easier to stay away from. Let's start by saying that there are over 200 species that can give you what is colloquially known as a shroom trip, so a journey of the psychedelic kind. Just imagine, eating these hallucinogenic mushrooms is actually a really ancient practice. In fact, we even have cave art evidence that shows us how the oldest civilizations already indulged in these psychedelic trips. In Algeria, for instance, in the caves of the Tassili Anadur mountain range, among the scenes of hunting, rituals, and dances, you can also find him, the mushroom shaman. Seriously, I'm not joking, and it dates back more than 7,000 years. Look, you can see that there are little mushrooms in his hands and all around his body, magic mushrooms. However, from a scientific perspective, what's so special about these types of mushrooms compared to other species? These types of mushrooms, compared to other species, contain psilocybin, a psychoactive substance that these fungi produce. Do you know why? In order to protect themselves from predatory insects. In fact, on insects, psilocybin actually has a super satiating effect. That is to say, if an ant eats a minuscule piece, it will feel like it's just finished a New Year's Eve feast, like one of those magic beans in Dragon Ball. You know what I'm talking about, right? You eat three or four of them and that's it. In this way, the clever mushroom doesn't get eaten completely and survives undisturbed. But if we humans eat them instead, what happens? Once again, here to explain things to you is our trustworthy chemist of choice, Dina. Well, first off, I should make it clear that psilocybin, which you quite rightly mentioned, is way less mind-altering in its original form than you might think. Let me explain. When you eat the mushroom, the psilocybin enters your blood and makes its way to your liver. And it's the liver that is actually responsible for our journey, our trip, because it turns the psilocybin into psilocin, and that's the stuff that really packs a psychedelic punch. This process of converting psilocybin into psilocin is referred to as dephosphorylation. To put it briefly, the liver enzymes strip a phosphate group off psilocybin, thereby giving it this new structure. It is pretty much identical in structure to the serotonin molecule, the happiness neurotransmitter. That is precisely the reason why, once it reaches the brain, the psilocin can readily attach itself to serotonin receptors and initiate their release. However, it doesn't stop there. Psilocin inhibits the reabsorption of serotonin, resulting in a significant accumulation of this neurotransmitter in the brain. In science speak, we might say that psilocin acts as a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So this accumulation of serotonin in the brain kicks off the magic mushroom trip. About 30 minutes after you take it, the, the hallucinogenic effects begin, and these can last for up to three hours. Contrast and color are intensified, surfaces start to move, to ripple, to shimmer. And moving objects may even leave trails in their wake. However, hallucinations are not always only visual. You may also experience auditory hallucinations. By that I mean that you might hear sounds that don't exist, or even see sounds. What do you mean see sounds? Well, because you might experience something they call synesthesia. It's this phenomenon where your senses start to get all mixed up, letting you, for example, see a sound or even hear a smell. And always talking about particular effects, psilocin can also make you feel an unusual sense of peace and connection with the universe. Basically, it boosts the neural connections in different areas of the brain, getting them all to work together, even parts that don't usually communicate with each other. So it lets you see the world from a whole new perspective. It's as if normally the areas of your brain were pieces of a puzzle that operated independently, and these connections that are made actually manage to bring the pieces together, allowing you a big picture view, which is usually impossible to achieve. Psilocin also makes it harder to tell the difference between fantasy and reality by inhibiting some of the brain's connections to create new ones and activating areas linked to dreaming. All the factors we've talked about play a part in triggering the intense hallucinations typical of a magic mushroom trip. Obviously, the intensity of the hallucinations depends on the type of mushroom and the dosage. Recent studies from Johns Hopkins University, for example, have shown how microdosing, so like taking a tiny amount, does not cause hallucinations, but still provides the positive and antidepressant effects of psilocin. In fact, by acting on serotonin, the happiness molecule, it works in a way that is pretty similar to some of the antidepressants out there on the market. 
That's why for several years now, a team of experts led by Roland Griffiths, a professor in the psychiatry and neuroscience department at Johns Hopkins, has been digging deep into the matter, conducting a great number of studies to find out what the risks and the benefits of the substance are for psychiatry. In particular, researchers are examining the potential effects of psilocin on a range of conditions, including addiction, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Anyway, we know that all substances, medicinal or otherwise, have the potential to be harmful. Magic mushrooms, though, are the recreational drug with the absolute lowest toxicity. I know, it sounds crazy, right? Typically, mushrooms are seen as extremely dangerous and harmful. But actually, psilocybin isn't as neurotoxic as people think it is, and nor does it cause permanent physical damage, even at high doses. To actually overdose on mushrooms, for instance, you'd have to eat kilos of them, and that's clearly impossible. Crazy as it sounds, it is way easier to die from an overdose of aspirin. What's more, certain studies have even brought to light the fact that psilocybin can help people who are being treated for addiction. What? A drug that cures addiction? What sense does that make? Well, effectively, although psilocybin is a psychoactive substance, it is actually less addictive than other substances. This is because the brain very quickly develops a strong tolerance to it. So, to put it simply, if you were to take doses of shrooms too close together, you'd experience increasingly less powerful effects from them, or even no effect at all. That being said, it is also true that hallucinations from mushrooms can be veritable living nightmares. I'm talking about what they call a bad trip. During such a trip, while you're hallucinating, especially if you've taken a massive dose, your deepest fears can come to life. If we're scared of spiders, for instance, we might start seeing them everywhere, crawling all over us, up and down, tiny ones, huge ones. If we're claustrophobic, the walls may start closing in on us, making it feel like we're about to suffocate. The mushroom experience in these cases is anything but fun and can cause anxiety and fear. So, in order to avoid a bad trip, people with less experience often make use of a so-called trip sitter, a friend, or an acquaintance who stays sober and alert when someone is tripping, so they can calm the user down and step in if needed. Whether it's a positive psychedelic experience or a bad trip depends, above all, on your set and settings. I'll explain what I mean. The term set is an abbreviation for mindset, so it refers to a person's mental state, their mood and psychological outlook, whether they are ready or willing to deal with the trip they're about to take. The setting, on the other hand, refers to the social and physical environment where the trip takes place and concerns. For example, the use of music, of art, of being in nature, and with people you trust. So, to conclude, if the set and the setting are not right, meaning that if the mental and physical conditions are not favorable, then consuming the substance is not a good idea, because the psychedelic experience could very well become a bad trip. Also, it needs to be said that in rare cases, psilocybin can trigger symptoms of mental illness in predisposed subjects. What does that mean? For instance, if there is already a history of mental health issues in the family, there is a greater likelihood that magic mushrooms could cause a psychotic or manic episode. So, at present, psilocybin is still being studied by the scientific community in an effort to find out what might be the potential risks and benefits of utilizing it for therapeutic purposes. What's for sure is that, from a scientific standpoint, it's an incredibly fascinating substance. And one that, with time, could lead to huge breakthroughs in the psychiatric field. However, it is important to remember that we are always talking about a psychoactive substance, so one that has the potential to drastically, and also violently, alter your perceptions. Therefore, we want to emphasize that, with this video, in no way do we endorse or encourage its usage. On the contrary, the aim of this series is to help you get a better understanding of the real effects that drugs can have on your health. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. See you for our next episode on the effects of drugs, right here on Geopop Everyday Science.